Uh, hello, today we're talking about lesson 4.4 4 on page 155 of your textbook. Our topic today is dividing tens, hundreds, and thousands. So let's get started. So in the unlock the problem, Dustin is packing apples in gift boxes. And um, each gift box holds four apples. How many boxes can Dustin pack with 120 apples? So our total is 120 apples. That's our dividend. That's how many I have to share. And I'm going to be putting them in boxes of four. So our division problem would be divide 120 divided by four. And it says we can divide by using basic facts and place value. All right. So <clears throat> identify the basic math fact. So 12 divided by 4. That's my basic math fact. So now I can use place value and call 12. 120 is the same as 12 tens. Okay, so 12 tens divided by 4. How many fours does it take to get the 12 tens? It would take three tens. Four times three is 12. So three tens is 30. So 120 divided by four is 30. So he can pack 30 boxes. All right, easy enough. Okay, now example two, we're going to divide 1,200 divided by 4. So again, identify the basic math fact, 12 and 4. 12 divided by 4. Use place value. So 12, 1,200 can be written as 12 hundreds. Okay, 12 and two zeros would be 12 hundreds. So 12 divided by 4 is 3 hundreds. And how do we write 300? We write it as 300, 300. Zero, zero. Three zero, zero. Explain how to use a basic math fact and place value. Divide 40. Uh, I hope if you actually can see it, right? Uh, to divide 4,000, divide by 5. Well, so let's write this out. 40. 4,000 divided by 5. So my basic math fact is 40 divided by 5. So 40 divided by 5 Let me back up. Sorry. Alright. So we know our basic math fact is 40 divided by 5. We're going to rewrite the 4,000 as 40 hundreds divided by 5. So 40 hundreds divided by 5. How many hundreds is that? 8 times what is 40? 8. So 8 hundreds, which is the same as saying 800. So what we do, step 1. Identify basic math fact. Forty divided by five. Step two, used place value. Forty hundreds divided by five. And step three, I divided. So those are our steps, right? We identify the basic math fact, 40 divided by 5. We use place value. We wrote 4,000 as 40 hundreds, and we divided by 5. And then we just divided, and that gave us 800. Okay, let's go to 156. So on 156, number 1, divide 2,800 by 7. What's the basic math fact we can use? We're going to take 28 and we're going to divide by 7. Okay, what is 
2,800. What's another way of writing that using place value? So 28 hundreds. And 28 hundreds divided by 7. 7 times what is 28? 7, 14, 21, 28, 4. So 4 hundreds times 7 is 28 hundreds. So 2,800 divided by 7 is 400. And then it wants us to divide 280 divided by 7. What's the basic math fact? It's still 28 divided by 7. And how can we rewrite 280? We can rewrite that as 28 tens. So 28 tens divide by 7 will give me 4 tens. 7 times 4 is 28, 4 tens. So how do I rewrite 4 tens? 4 tens is rewritten as 40. Pretty easy. So number three, use basic facts and place value to find the quotient. So our basic fact is 36 divided by 6. We're going to rewrite that as 36 tens divided by 6 equals 6 tens. Okay. 6 times 6 is 36, so 36 tens. How do I write 6 tens? As yeah, 60. Number 4, basic math fact is 20 divided by 5. We're going to rewrite 2,000 as 20 hundreds divided by 5. 20 hundreds divided by 5 is 4 hundreds. So 2,000 divided by 5 is 400. Number five, basic math fact, 45 divided by 9. We're going to rewrite 45 hundreds as 45 hundreds. And we're going to divide by 9. So 45 divided by 9, that takes me five nines to get to 45. So five Hundreds, five hundreds. So how do we write five hundreds? Five hundred. Okay. Um, number six through fourteen. I'm going to use another sh piece of paper to give myself a little more room. So number six, we have five hundred sixty divided by eight. The basic math fact is 56 and 8. So 56 divided by 8. So I'm going to rewrite 56, uh, 560 as 56 tens divided by 8. And 56 divided by 8 is 7. So 7 tens. 560 divided by 8 equals 70. Number 7. 200 divide by 5. Basic math fact is 20 divided by 5. So 20 tens divide by 5. 20 divided by 5 is 4. So 4 tens. 200 divided by 5 equals 40. Number 8. 240 Divide by 4. The basic math fact is 24 divide by 4. I'm going to rewrite 240 as 24 tens. 24 tens divided by 4 is 6 tens. So 240 divided by 4 is 60. Number 9. 810 divided by 9. 810 divided by 9. The basic math fact, 81 divided by 9. Okay. I'm going to rewrite 810 as 81 tens divided by 9. 
81 divided by 9 is 9 tens. So 810 divided by 9 is 90. Number 10, 6,400 divided by 8. 6,400 divided by 8. Basic math fact, 34 divided by 8. Ah, 34. 64 divided by 8. So I'm going to rewrite 6,400 as 64 hundreds divided by 8. 8 times what is 64? 8. So 8 hundreds. So 6,400 divided by 8 is 8 hundreds. 800. Number 11, 3,500 divided by 7. Basic math fact, 35 divided by 7. 35 hundreds divided by 7. 35 divided by 7 is 5. So 5 hundreds. So 3,500 divide by 7 equals 500. Number 12. We have 5,000 divide by 5. So I'm going to rewrite. This is the basic math fact. 50 divide by 5. So I'm going to have 50 hundreds divide by 5. 50 divided by 5 is 10, so 10 hundreds. 5,000 divided by 5 is 1,000. 13. 9,000 divided by 3. 9,000 divided by 3. So 9 divided by 3 is our basic math fact. So I'm going to rewrite this as 9 thousands divided by 3 equals, sorry, 9,000 divided by 3. I'm rewriting that as 9 thousands divided by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3 thousands. So 9,000 divided by 3 is 3,000. And 14. 3,000 divided by 5. 3,000 divided by 5. Our basic math fact this time is 30 divided by 5. So I'm going to have 30 hundreds. Divide by 5. 30 divided by 5 is 6. So 6 hundreds gives me 3,000 divided by 5 equals 600. Okay. 15. Use patterns. So if we go back to what we've been doing, we've been trying to identify the basic math fact, right? And so 42 divided by something will give me 6 tens. So 42 tens divided by what gives me 6 tens? Well, if I didn't know that, I can count by 6s, right? Because one of the factors is 6. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 7. So the missing number has to be 7. 42 divided by 7 is 6 tens. So my answer is 7. Some number divided by 4 gave me 30. So 
some number of tens divided by four gave me three tens. Well, these are our basic facts or factors if we multiply. So four times three is 12. 12 tens is 120. Does that make sense? 12 divided by four is three and we'd have three tens. So yep, that's right. Number 17, we have 810 divided by something. It gives me 90. So that's 81 tens divided by something equals nine tenths. So nine times what is 81? Nine times what is 81? Nine. Okay. So nine is our missing number. Divide 400, divide by 40. Explain how patterns and place value can help. So, well, all right, so 400 divided by 40. Well, if I did 40 divided by 40, that's 1. So we'd have, we'd have 40 tens divided by 40 would give me 1 10. So my answer is 10. 400 divided by 40 equals 10. And so dividing 40 tens by 40 equals 1 10 or a value of 10. I suppose you could say divide 400 by 4 tens. And then the answer would be decreased by the same multiple of 10. I guess that would work. But so, so is recognizing that any number divided by itself is 1. 19. Jamal put 600 pennies into six equal rows. How many pennies were in each row? Well, let's not make this hard. So, 19. 600 pennies going to be put equally into six rows. So what does that equal? Well, our basic math fact is 6 divided by 6. So we're going to have 6 hundreds divided by 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1. So we have 1 hundred. So 600 divided by 6 equals 100. So there's 100 pennies in each row. Easy enough. Okay, 20. Selena, oh, Selena. Yeah, I can read, really. Sela, or Sela, has six times as many coins now as she had four months ago. If Sela now has 240 coins, how many coins did she have four months ago? How many coins did she have four months ago? So what can we do here? Well, she now has 240 coins. That's six times as many as she had four months ago. So 240 divided by six. So our basic math fact is 24 divided by six. So 24 tens divided by six. 24 divided by six is four tens. So 240 divide by 6 equals 40. So four months ago, she had 40 coins. Okay. 21. Chip collected 2,090 dimes. Wow, that's a lot of dimes. Sue collected 1,910 dimes. 
they divided all their dimes into eight equal stacks. How many dimes are in each stack? Okay, so I think I'm going to find a total first of all their dimes. Okay, so I'm going to add the two together to get the total number of dimes. So I came up with 4,000 dimes between the two of them. Okay. They're now going to take those 4,000 dimes and put them into eight equal piles. Okay, so how many dimes are in each stack? So again, where did I get the 4,000 from? I added the two sets of dimes together, two collection of dimes. My basic math fact is 40 divided by 8. So 40 hundred divided by 8. 40 divided by 8 is 500. 500. So 4,000 divided by 8 is 500. So 500 dimes in each stack. 22. Mr. Roberts sees a rare 1937 penny. The cost of the penny is $210. If he saves $3 each week, will Mr. Roberts have enough money to buy the penny in one year? Hmm. Well, let's see what we've got here. We've got a total of $210. He's going to save $3 each week. Will he have enough money to buy one penny, buy the penny in one year? Hmm. So we need to know how many weeks are in a year, don't we? One year is 52 weeks. Okay, we, do, we need to know that. So let's see how many weeks it's going to take. He has $210 divided by $3 per week. So 210 divided by 3. So we have 21 divided by 3 is our basic math fact. 21 tens divided by 3. That would be 7 tens. So $210 divided by 3 will be 70. That's going to take him 70 weeks. So he's, he's not going to have enough at the end of the year, which equals 70 weeks. He will not have enough. Since there are only 52 weeks in a year. Twenty-three. Mrs. Fletcher bought five coins for thirty-two dollars each. Later she sold all the coins for three hundred dollars. How much more did she receive than she paid? Well, let's see. First, multiply 5 and 32 to find how much she spent. So 32 times 5. 5 times 2 is 10. Regroup it as 110. 5 times 3 tens is 15 tens, plus 1 more is 16 tens. She spent $160. Then subtract 360.
to get $140. Okay, so she got $140, but it says for each coin. So she got a total of $140. So now divide 140 by 5. So we have 14 divided by 5. Okay, so uh, how many fives will it take to get close to 140 or to 14 tens? 5, 10, 15. Okay, it can't be 3, so that's going to be 2 tens. with four left over. So fourteen tens, two tens, four left over. I'm just checking my work. Something doesn't seem quite right to me. So she did spend $160 and she sold all the coins for $300. Okay, so she did sell them for $140. So $140 divided by five. Five, so twenty-eight dollars. Now, so I can do this one because I, I I know the process for dividing that. So there was, must be a simpler way for you to do it. So let's look at doing it this way. Okay, if she spent, let's do it this way. Three hundred coins divided by five. Uh, $300 divided by five. She's selling all the coins for $300, right? She has five coins. So let's figure out the cost of, or the, the amount she receives per coin when she sells them. 30 divided by five. So 30 tens divided by five is six tens. Okay. So 300 divided by five is 60. So she received $60 a coin. She spent $32 a coin. So I can't take two from nothing. So 10 divided by two is eight and five take away is, five take away three tens is two. So she got $28 more per coin. Okay, so this one's a little more advanced way, a little more difficult to do it this way. So I would recommend doing, changing the 300 coins, uh, $300 and dividing by the five coins to figure out how much she received for each coin. So 30 tens divided by five gave me six tens. So she received $60 per coin. So 60 take away 32 because she spent $32 per coin at per coin at the beginning, giving her $28 more per coin. All right, let's move on to page, 120, uh, page 158, number 24. Which quotients are equal to 20? Which quotients are equal to 20? So in this one, we have six hundreds divided by two. Well, six divided by two is 300. Well, that's not 20. This one we have 12 hundreds. I'm going to abbreviate that as hund for sake of space. Divide by six. That gives me 200. Well, that's not 20. 18 
10 divided by 9. 18 divided by 9 is 2 tens. 2 tens is 20. So C works. 140, so 14 tens divided by 7 is 2 tens. So D is 20. 50 tens divided by 5 gives me 10 tens. That's 100. Sort of not. Okay, so just, just C and D. All right, and our last section, connect to science, insect flight. So true flight True flight is shared only by insects, bats, and birds. Flight in insects varies from the, from the clumsy flight of some beetles to the acrobatic moves of dragonflies. The wings of insects are not moved by muscles attached to the wings. Muscles in the middle part of the body, or th thorax, move the wings. The thorax changes shape as the wings move. So over here, this is our table. We said whenever we have a table or a chart, we want to make sure we understand what it's telling us. So our title is Insect Wing Beats in Three Minutes. So this is how many times their wings beat in three minutes. The dragonfly, 6,900 beats in three minutes. The damselfly, 2,700 beats in three minutes. The butterfly, 2,100 times in three minutes. And the scorpionfly, 5,000 times in three minutes. So about how many times does a damsel fly's wings beat in one minute? So what you're going to do with that is you're going to take the 2,700 and we're going to divide by three. If I divide by three, that'll tell me how many per one minute. So the basic math fact is 27 divided by three. So we have 2,700 divided by three. 27 divided by three is nine hundreds. So 2,000. 700 divided by 3, 940 beats in one minute. Now, if we added 903 times, we should get 2,700. That would be three minutes. And 900, 1,800, 2,700, that would work. About how many times do a scorpion's fly's wing beat in six minutes? Well, if the scorpion fly is doing 5,000 every three minutes, if it's doing it for six minutes, isn't that just double, right? So I'm just going to double the number of minutes from three minutes to six. So that would be giving me two sets of three minutes, right? Three minutes, 5,000 beats. Three minutes, 5,000 beats. So we can just add 5,000 plus 5,000. So 10,000 times in six minutes. Moving on, number 27. In one minute, about how many more times do a damsel flies wings beat than a large white butterfly's wings in one minute. So we know the damselfly is 900 per minute. Now we have to figure out the white butterfly, which is 2100 divided by 3. So the reason we're dividing by 3 is to figure out how much it would beat in one minute. So 21 divided by 3. So we have 700, no, 700, 2100 divide by three, which would give me seven hundreds. So 2,100 divided by three is 700. So what's 900 take away 700? Uh, we can do that in our head. 900 take away 700 is 200 more minutes, uh, 200 more beats or 200 more times And the answer is about 2,300 times. What's the question?
Hmm. Let's see something. 2,300 times 3. I'm just curious. Maybe, the, maybe this is a per minute amount. So 3 times nothing is nothing. 3 times 0 tens is 0 tens. 3 times 300 is 900. And 3 times 2,000 is 6,000. Okay, so it's the, the dragonfly. So how many times does a dragonfly wing beat per minute? How many times does a dragonfly's wing beat per minute? 2,300 times. Okay. All right, so that's it for lesson 4.4. And so until tomorrow when we're estimating quotients using compatible numbers, may the numbers always be in your favor.